certain tools. It clearly requires training and support that lies behind all of that. And that, again, has to be something that we do need to move forward on, just simply because of the challenges and the volume, the sheer volume of data that is there. And I'm acutely aware of the reports that I continue to receive of the backlogs that exist within the system of actually ensuring that digital data is analysed and actually examined effectively to see what is there and what is useful and how best that can be deployed in an investigation. But I think we also need to look at the way in which standards can be set, that data security officers are working to the same standards in identifying collating evidence as those perhaps who are involved <coughs> in law enforcement. If forensic digital evidence can be packaged up in a manner that is likely to be more acceptable to the police and the CPS, then this could be a step forward in bringing computer crimes to justice more speedily and more effectively. What I'm talking about is common standards here, so that again we get that partnership approach that everybody is taking a similar sort of stance on this, so that we all understand the, uh, I suppose, the, um, the, the issues and equally the disciplines that are necessary to be able to ensure that something is robust and effective. Uh, clearly this is a shared responsibility. That's why I believe that business and industry have their part to play in providing information on scams when they happen and to give support and assistance to enable prosecutions to take place. I hope that this can be achieved voluntarily, that business and industry will come forward to provide the information on those sorts of incidents when they happen and to give support and assistance to enable prosecutions to take place. But if cooperation isn't forthcoming, I am prepared to consider introducing appropriate suspicious activity reporting requirements and specific legal assistance obligations to ensure that we can take necessary steps to deliver greater cyber security. Similarly, there is a clear responsibility on the operators of video file sharing websites to ensure that grossly offensive images are not made available for download and when reports are made to them that inappropriate images are there, that they take them down promptly. Some operators are better in compliance than others, and whilst I believe that self-regulation is normally the best starting point, again, I am prepared to consider what liability might accrue to internet service providers who fail to act on requests to take down images or comply with reasonable requests to remove from malicious material. It may be that in these circumstances, having been put on notice, hosts and ISPs might lose their defence of being a mere conduit and potentially attract liability themselves. But in the longer term, I think protection will come through education and training. Education and training on the law enforcement side, but equally education and training on the preventative side as well. That's why I've said that we would promote cyber safety and cyber security as an integral part of all ICT training in schools and colleges. Young people may be very tech savvy, but they may often be surprisingly unknowing, uh, surprisingly naive.